Hey there, it's Bree, and these are my recent reads. These recent reads took place from May 9th to May 16th, and I ended up reading nine books in those seven days, which is really, really good. Part of it is because I am actually currently, as of the day that I'm filming this, which is Sunday, I'm currently filming a reading vlog, so I was reading a lot of books over the past few days, so that's why I packed in so many during this week. I will say that because I am filming a reading vlog and that will be up, I believe, on Wednesday, I'm not going to talk about the books that I read during that reading vlog. I'm going to save it for that reading vlog. So normally I would talk about the book that I'm currently reading, but since I'm reading it for the reading vlog, we're gonna skip over that too, and we're gonna just jump right into the books that I read during this past week. So the first one that I read was Step Stalker by Jessica Kane. Jessica Kane books tend to be like a palate cleanser for me, especially if I'm feeling a little bit slumpy after a book. I'll pick up a Jessica Kane book, and that's kind of the situation that this was. I think, what did I read before this? I think I may have read her other new release, which is Bulky, which is a big boy romance, and then she recently released this book too. I think this is her newest release, and as soon as I saw that she released this one, I was like, that's an intriguing premise. So this book is a step-sibling slash stalker romance. I will say it's like stalker light because I don't know that I would necessarily call the hero a stalker. He's just obsessive <laughs> about the heroine. So basically, it is also a military romance. The hero is in the military and he, I think he's in like special forces and he just made a very high profile kill. So he is very much in the media eye and everything and he's coming home. His father has just been remarried and he was remarried while he was away. And he has been writing to his stepsister thinking that she's younger, like a lot younger than him. And they have been writing back and forth since he was away. And she has kind of kept him sane while he was gone. His father is very, mu very much a military man, and he thinks that men shouldn't be emotional. There's a lot of toxic masculinity coming from his father. And then when he comes home, the hero, and he meets the stepsister for the first time, he realizes that she's not young. She's actually very attractive and beautiful. And even though she is innocent, she's not a lot younger than him. I don't even know I don't know how much younger than him she is, but she's not a lot younger than him. And they end up having an immediate attraction. And because they had this history of writing back and forth and he already feels a connection to her, the connection is even stronger. And then of course, it's super short, super steamy, as all Jessica Kane novels are. He does become super, super obsessive. I ended up really liking this one. It's not my favorite Jessica Kane, so I gave it four stars, but I did really like it. After that, I read a book that was on my May TBR. It's Follow by Tessa Bailey. This book kind of let me down, to be completely honest. This one was very, very insta-lovey. So the whole premise is actually a decent premise. The heroine, her brother, has gotten into some crap with like a mafia, with a mafia of some sort in New York. And so she goes to New York to talk to the mob boss. I guess her family, like her parents, have a history of being involved with this like mob boss, but his dad finally got out of it. And then their parents had passed away unrelated to that. But their parents worked really hard in getting out of that lifestyle, but now her brother is back in that lifestyle and she goes to New York hoping to kind of negotiate with this mob boss. And the mob boss is like, he's intrigued by her and he's like, I want you to go and find my son and bring him here to New York. And I guess his son is a very wealthy, like a super, super successful guy in finance, but he has left his job because his he found out that his dog doesn't have long to live and he's taking his dog on a road trip, which is actually very adorable. The mob boss guy is like not happy with that because he wants more for his son. Like he wants his son to be the successful guy and not leave like this whole life that he built for himself. The son also is holding a grudge against his father. So she's supposed to go there, convince him to go back to New York by any means necessary. And she's like, okay, I don't necessarily, and she's also obviously not allowed to tell him like who sent her and everything. So she's like, okay, all I have to do is get him there and lure him there. That's all I have to do. And I can get myself and my brother out of this situation. So she goes there and I actually really liked how they met. She pretends that the motel that they're at, she pretends that they gave her the wrong key, which was his room key when really she like snuck in. So she's in his room when he comes back and she's like completely topless sitting in his room. And he's like, um, so he walks in, he's like, um, what is happening? And she's like, this is my room. He's like, no, this is my room. And so she pretends that 
you know, they gave her the wrong room key or whatever. It's actually kind of brilliant. And I liked that initial reaction, how confident she was in her own body, just like sitting there topless. But then it ended up being extremely insta lovey. I was kind of hoping that he would be, he's very hesitant about her and he doesn't trust her like the entire time, which also kind of got annoying. But he also was very much attracted to her and acting on that attraction, even though he didn't trust her. And it was just... It moved a little bit too fast. It felt a little gratuitous at times, and I kind of lost interest as I was reading this book, and I didn't love it as much as I like some of Tessa Bailey's newer works. I am interested to read some of her other books to see if those are all super insta-lovey, over the top, or if it was just this book. So I ended up giving that one three stars. And then I had my buddy read with Jen from the book Refuge. We ended up reading Flock by Kate Stewart together. I Okay, so after talking to Jen about this, she is the one who kind of told me that this book is making its rounds on, I think maybe TikTok. I don't watch book talk, but I think it's making its rounds on TikTok. And I guess a lot of people in the booktube community have been reading it and bookstagram and stuff. And I honestly didn't know there was a lot of hype around this book. The main reason why I wanted to read it was because Tori from Novel Life read it and she really liked it. And I remember her raving about it. So as soon as I knew that I wanted to read it, I knew that I didn't want to know anything about it. I wanted to just go in completely blind. The only thing I knew was that Tori liked it and that was it. So I went in completely blind. Anytime I saw anyone talk about this book, I purposely did not listen to it. I would like fast forward their videos or not look at their, at their stories or whatever the case may be. I purposely went into it completely blind. So I did not know some major things going into it, which I think increased my enjoyment of it more than it did Jen. I'm pretty sure Jen didn't love this book. And I think because it just didn't live up to the hype, this has a polyamorous relationship in it, which I didn't know and I was pleasantly surprised about. It's one of those situations where <laughs> a lot of times whenever there's a love triangle in a book, I'm like, I like both of the heroes so much that I'm like, why can't they all just get together? In this one, they do. So it's, it made me happy. And then the second thing is, I didn't know it left on a cliffhanger. I was like, mind blown to the point where like I was I was talking to Jen about it but I read it a little bit faster than her because I started it sooner than she did I had I like complained to her I was like oh my god I can't believe this is a cliffhanger and I needed to know what was going to happen and I was a little bit mad about it because I was like gosh darn it because I was not expecting it like it ended so abruptly I didn't know like where I was in the book because I was listening to the audiobook I didn't know where I was in the book when it came to the end. So I didn't know it was the end. I thought there was going to be more. And then all of a sudden the credits are rolling and I'm like, I'm sorry, what? So I remember I, mes I messaged Tori and started yelling about it. And I felt bad because she had just gotten her second shot and she was like really, really sick and down for the count. And I was like yelling at her. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> because I had forgotten I'm a bad friend. But anyway, so I like freaked out over that. And then I immediately went in and read Exodus. I had to. I couldn't not read Exodus right after that because I just wanted to know what was going on. So first, let's talk about Flock for a second. Again, this has a polyamorous, polyamorous relationship. So the two, there are two heroes. I didn't love one of the heroes. Like he was fine, Sean. He's one of the heroes. He's very much like, a, he's a little bit flighty, like likes to live off the grid, doesn't like telephones or communication. He also smokes and I'm just so, it's not cute. To, like I don't like heroes that smoke. I think it's disgusting because especially to me, if I were to see a super, super hot guy and then he picks up the cigarette, I would immediately be like ill gross and just turn and walk the other way. Like I immediately 100% lose interest. So when this hero was smoking, I was like, eh. He was more of like the irreverent, bright, sunshiny type of hero. And then the other hero, Dominic, who is a good friend of him, they're almost like brothers, but they're very, very close. It's almost a hate to love situation or enemies to lovers. She goes to a party because Sean is her supervisor. I'm not explaining this well. <laughs> but let, let's rewind a little bit. So her father, she's moving, she's living with her father. She has grown up living with her mom and they do not have a lot of money at all. However, her father is very, very rich and he basically owns this huge company that like everyone in this small town where he lives works at. So he's this big powerhouse in this small town and she has never seen a dime of his money because of his relationship with her mother. So she ends up going and living with him because she wants to fulfill whatever she has to fulfill in order to get her inheritance or whatever. I forget what it's called. It's not an inheritance. It's something else. I forget what it's called. So that she can give that money to her mother when she gets it. So she goes, she lives with him in this gorgeous, beautiful house. And then she also is working for the company that 
he owns. And Sean also works at the company. He is her supervisor. And he, the first day that she meets him, he invites her over to his house for a party. Dominic sees her there and he immediately is like, she doesn't belong here. She's the daughter of this like guy. And he immediately like kicks her out. And so she has this tension with Dominic. I immediately liked Dominic. I was like, I, I had a feeling that the, cause I didn't know it was polyamorous. So I had a feeling that it was going to be Sean and her relationship. And I was like, I wasn't super excited about it. I was like, but man, I like Dominic. I hope this is a love triangle, but it did one up and it's it's polyamorous. So I was very happy about that. And this book just had a lot going on. It was very dramatic. It was a lot, but it was entertaining and it held my attention. And I was interested enough in the romance, particularly between her and Dominic. Like she almost relates her relationship with Sean as like the son and he's like her sunshine and she relation she relates the relationship with Dominic as like, you know, like rain and like rain clouds and stuff. And she always says like in rainy days, she'll always think of Dominic and everything like that. So I liked that aspect of it. I didn't love the whole like mysterious element, like his Dominic and Sean are part of this like mysterious club. It almost seems like a motorcycle club of some sort or whatever. And it's all very mysterious. And I think you're supposed to think it's super intriguing and stuff. And I didn't care. And especially like Sean's whole outlook on life. He has this very different outlook about things and like social media and all sorts of stuff. And she thinks he's the most brilliant, different, unique guy. And she doesn't challenge him. She just immediately thinks that he's amazing because he has all these thoughts. And I just felt like it wasn't as deep as it was pretending to be. I think it was meant to be more deep than it actually was, and it just, it was actually not. <laughs> and so I, I kind of almost ignored that whole part of it and was just more interested in the relationships as I do, because that's kind of my MO. So moving on to Exodus, so I ended up giving that book four stars. Moving on to Exodus, we're introduced to a new character, and there ends up being this epic hate-to-love romance, like this is true hate to love. For those of you who don't like hate to love romances that aren't actually hate to love, it's more just like people who just dislike each other to love. This one's actual hate to love. They hate each other. They have hate sex. Like it's it's intense. The relationship is intense. And that's what I loved about the second book. What I didn't love about the second book was that it tried once again to be a lot deeper than it could. And it was very ambitious in what it was trying to pull off as far as this whole secret club thing. And I don't think it was done well. It was like, it was like a wannabe like fight club, wannabe Mr. Robot kind of situation, the whole Robin Hood thing that they had going on in it. And I just don't think it was done well. I also think it was way longer than it needed to be. There was, there was too much. It could have been probably about half as long as it was. And it probably could have done without that whole like Robin Hood aspect. Even if it did have it, if it was just done better, it just wasn't done very well in my opinion. I don't know. I just, I didn't love that part of it, but I was obsessed with that relationship. So I gave this one four stars as well. I feel like I talked about that horribly and that was very convoluted. I'm sorry about that. All right. So after that, I wanted something super quick and light to read. <laughs> quick and steamy, just... A nice palette cleanser after reading those two hefty books. So I wanted to pick up another book by Jane Rylan. I did a recent video where I was recommending something. Oh, my Worshipping Hero video. I recommended a book by Jane Rylan. It's called Power Tools. And after I read that book, I looked up more of her books and I pretty much downloaded any book that was free by her because I don't think her books are available on Kindle Unlimited. So one of the books that I had downloaded back then was Through My Window. It's called Red Light Star Number One. And I downloaded this book thinking that it was going to be similar to Power Tools and also thinking it was going to be something similar to like a Jessica Kane book. And the premise was interesting. So it's basically the heroine is a sex worker and I forget what country she lives in, but she's basically just a sex worker. And that's all I knew about it. And I was interested in it. And I thought it was going to be a romance. It is not a romance. This is just pretty much straight erotica because there's no overarching romance between two people or multiple people. There's no like real romance in it. It's really just about a girl who is a sex worker who loves her job. So even though this is not a romance and I thought it was a romance, going into it. I still enjoyed it. I gave it three stars because I wanted more from it. And if it was a romance, I would have really liked it. But what I did like about it was that it's about a sex worker who loves what she does. She loves making people happy and pleasing people. And she enjoys what she does. And it's it was interesting seeing the different customers that she had. And so I think it's like 
maybe three different customers. She has a regular that she sees. They have a good relationship with each other. They know each other fairly well. It's very comfortable for her and he's just a regular. And then, so one of the guys is a virgin and he goes and sees her and it's his first like experience with a woman. And so I like that. I actually wish that that would have turned into a relationship and the whole story revolved around that, but it didn't. It was just going from relationship to relationship. And then another one is with this couple. The man has some issues. I think he has like... ED, like erectile dysfunction or something, but he has some issues in the bedroom and he wants his wife to be satisfied. So they're bringing in and, and she and his wife and him agreed that they don't want another man involved. They just, they would like a woman involved. So they have her come in and like, she kind of helps the relationship, but it ultimately was just like erotica, but I liked that it was showing a sex worker in a positive light. And then last but not least, the last book I'm going to talk about was a bit of a disappointment. I read His Golden Heart by Marsha King Gamble. This book is available on Audible Plus. It's been, it's on my May TBR and also has been on my Audible Plus TBR that I wanted to read. I was really excited about this one because it's a romance between two Olympians and the hero is, I think, the first or and only black skier. He ends up getting injured and can't walk anymore. And he's very upset and angry about it. Obviously it rocks his world because his whole world was skiing and now he can't even walk. So it's really, really difficult for him. He's going through a lot. And then the heroine, she used to be a gymnast and then she had an injury. And although she was able to walk again, she can't be a gymnast anymore. So she has experience that relates to him. And she also, I don't know exact, I don't recall exactly what her profession is, but I think she's like a physical therapist of some sort, but she also was like the perfect person to work with him because she, she knows, knows what, it, like, what it's like to be an Olympian. And I was really, really intrigued by this story. However, it did kind of let me down. So the number one reason why it let me down is because the pacing seemed off and it felt like it jumped around quite a bit. And I just, I couldn't get invested in the relationship as I wanted to. I like the whole, I like the premise of the story and her kind of working with him and motivating him and everything. But there were a couple of times where there was language that was used that I wasn't comfortable with in terms of talking about disability. Obviously there was ableism. His ex fiance or ex girlfriend or something was so awful to him. Like she basically was like, well, who's going to love you now that you can't walk? And it was, it was awful. It's hard to read. So definitely there were definite trigger warnings for that. There's also use of the word lame. And unfortunately it was the heroine that said that to him. Ultimately, like I said, I was pretty let down by this. I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. I rounded it up on Goodreads to three stars, but it was a little bit disappointing. So after that, I did end up reading a few great books <laughs> for my reading vlog. So I'm very, very excited for you guys to watch that reading vlog. Like I said, it's going up on Wednesday and I will talk more about those books then. So anyway, that's it. Let me know down below what you read this week, how many books you read, all that good stuff. Let's talk in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy reading.